If you're wondering, where do all the boats go when a hurricane threatens? If you're fortunate enough to be in a hurricane club at a boatyard, they can haul you out. I'm at this boatyard in South Florida and you can see a lot of the boats have been hauled. In fact, so many boats have been hauled that the road in and the road out on the west side of the boatyard are full of boats. So I'll just take my time and walk down here through the boatyard, show you what's going on. We've got a sport fisherman, a Cabo sport fisherman with tunnel drives or prop pockets. Also has prop glop or prop speed on the propellers to make them more slippery, kind of like a Teflon. You may also notice that a lot of boats have the tripods tied together, port and starboard, more so on the flare of the bows, the bows of the boat. You can see another one with the sailboat here to my right. This blue boat is a Bertram and it has IPS, Volvo IPS pod drives to port and starboard. Notice that there's duo props facing forward to pull the boat, kind of like front wheel drive, and there is no rudder. Notice no rudder. That whole apparatus turns or swivels like an outboard motor would. There's a main ship 43, a Beneteau Swift trawler, um, not sure, it might be a 44. Another sport fish with prop pockets, trim tabs. Notice the small rudders. Fast boats have small rudders, less drag. Keep in mind, I'm walking down the street. All these boats are in the middle of the road. Warrior is a traditional boat with traditional propeller drive, no pockets, no pods, no IPS. That's a Hatteras brand boat, very pretty traditional boat. Here you can see the ropes tying the tripods together so they won't wiggle out with the wind blowing very hard, hurricane force winds. That's the annex yard over to the east. That boat, Last Mango, it's a charter boat, operates out of Fort Pierce. Big surprise is a Hatteras. Big propellers, big trim tabs on the back. Looking across the middle of the boat yard, you can see a dinghy lashed down onto the swim platform of the boat. This boat, MT, I don't know which state MT is, Montana, it's a guess. Winterlude, very nice big boat. I'm going to guess that's a Navigator. Really big boat, traditional drive. Now the boats over here in the gravel are in here for service before the hurricane was discovered or known. All the boats in the highway and the driveway are here for hurricane haul out protection. Keep in mind to check your insurance policy for your hurricane plan and you have to follow the hurricane plan or else the insurance company may not pay up. Got a car that's stuck in here trying to figure out how to get out. Maybe he's camera shy, I don't know. This is a cute little commercial fishing boat. Got a skeg, full skeg rudder so that way he can run across a log or a sandbar and not damage his propeller. You may also notice he's got dry exhaust. That big rusty pipe, let me back up, you can see it there on the rooftop, that's dry exhaust and the life rafts, an old style traditional life raft. Priority Mel, a tiara from Virginia, trim tabs, prop pockets, and this is kind of unique. This is the exhaust, underwater exhaust, so that way you won't get that much of the smell or the noise when the boat's running. A big houseboat, actually it's a catamaran houseboat. Another bow shot with the rope tying the tripods together so they do not wiggle out. 
Way down here we've got the big sport fisherman and this owner of the boat went through extra efforts and bought these big straps to strap the tripod support and starboard together. Not only did he strap them at the top, but he also strapped them at the bottom. So this is going above and beyond and I think it's truly a wonderful idea and he did a terrific job. So unless this Viking floats away with a 10 foot extra high tide, I think he will be fine. Let me walk across the street and you can see the tunnel in this catamaran boat. So that's actually two hulls, catamaran, and I'm going to guess he's outboard. While I'm walking over to the right, you can see the travel lift has been disassembled. All of the straps and all of the cables are removed so they won't flip and flop around in the hurricane force winds. This Regal from Vero Beach, Florida, I live in Vero Beach, and it has duo props. You can see the two contra rotating propellers. One is clockwise, one is anti-clockwise. It looks like three blades and three blades. Sometimes you'll have four blades and three blades. They're stainless steel, you can see that. Here's one of the local tour boats. So if you come down to Florida for the winter time, all of the snowbirds, you can go to Fort Pierce and you can go on this tour boat. There's their phone number. And again, looking down the road. Look at all these big boys sitting in the middle of the road. Goodness, look at the propeller on that first big sport fisherman. This big pursuit's 35 feet and it's got outboards. Two outboard motors on that big 35 foot pursuit. By the way, pursuits are built here in Fort Pierce, Florida. And this is what I'm looking at, this big propeller. Let me get around and I'll count the blades. One, two. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blades, a seven blade propeller kind of small trim tab tucked into the transom there. Seven blades, big, 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 big. I bet you this guy will get up and go pretty quick. You can tell the horsepower, a lot of horsepower, look at the size of that exhaust pipe. The hand is inside the exhaust pipe, that's how big it is. Let's get back on the sunny side. I haven't talked anything about bow thrusters, so here's a bow thruster on this sport fisherman. And you can see all the outriggers to pull extra lines for trolling, trolling for billfish, big game fish, sailfish, marlins, so they can spread them out. They actually connect right there to that connection on the side of the boat, and then they lean outboard. And depending on how these outriggers are put together, you can carry another two or three per outrigger, plus two on the stern. So you can have as many as six, eight, ten lines pulling behind one boat. This orangey looking stuff is prop speed or prop glop. Just think of it being something akin to a Teflon coating to make it slippery. That way it will slip and slide through the water a lot faster and the boat will go faster. No barnacles will grow on it if you keep the boat moving every week. If the boat becomes a dock queen, the barnacles will stick to it and you're in trouble. We spoke earlier of a bow thruster. Here's the stern thruster. You can see they've got both of the propellers removed for servicing. There's the propellers laying right there. And then the big propulsion propellers have been removed. I don't see them anywhere, so they may be in the shop getting tuned up. Looking back at this big Viking, that's a pretty boat. Real clean, real slick, good looking boat. 
going back on the road again. RV Sunburst. RV is a research vessel. And you can see the big skeg and the protected propeller all the way up so you can run that on a sandbar. No problems there. Another big pretty sport fisherman, this big yellow guy. Notice there's no bow thruster. And he only has five bladed propeller instead of seven like that other boat. Oh well. The other guy wins. Again, he's got prop glop or prop speed. And we're getting up to the gate to the city streets. Our last big sport fisherman. Mind you, these are all custom sport fishermen. We're on the Treasure Coast in Florida. Also the Marlin Capital in Stewart, Florida. Sailfish Capital, pardon me, Sailfish Capital in Stewart, Florida. And another five blade propeller. Let's say hi to the security cameras that's watching me. And this is Cow Park, Cow Poke. And the trim tabs here have got dual ramrods. Instead of being far apart, they're close together. And you can see where the propeller cavitation has worn some of the prop glop off right here. I don't know if they'll be able to take care of that while the boat's in the yard for the hurricane, but it'll be something they'll have to address pretty soon before barnacles start growing on it. In fact, you can see there's worm coral, those little little weird things right there called worm coral. And again, thinking about how much horsepower this boat has, there's exhaust pipe, there's my hand. Look how big that exhaust pipe is. Plenty, plenty of horsepower. So off these boats are in the yard, sitting down on the ground. Again, you can see all those guys are sitting in the street. Over there, they're sitting in the street. Tripods are tied together so they don't shimmy out with the high winds. And we just hope you can wish us good luck. We'll get through this and we'll get all these boats back in the water after the storm passes. If you've got questions about hurricane protection, check with your insurance company. Read the navigation limits on your insurance policy. Check what the hurricane rules and regulations are geographically, calendar, date-wise, and if you're required to take the boat out of the water or to a safe harbor. If you have any questions about hurricanes, boat yards, or going cruising, ask Captain Chris.